if you have your computer and you want to share it so that we can see or if you don't want to share it, it's also fine so kelechi the floor is yours okay, okay sir sorry i didn't uh, make comment on the document i just highlighted some of the, the things i saw okay all right, so for the first one, I said um, career objectives um, was not really necessary. Since there is a, a career objective and personal statement, you can diffuse them into one, maybe title it research interest, since they are. Okay suggestion that's to diffuse the two statements personal statement and career objectives into maybe just one maybe Kelechi, sorry before you continue let me just share my let me share the cv that we are we are talking about, that we are working on so that people who don't have it can also see it although i have my comment on them but it's fine so that it will it will help your as your giving your comment people will know where you are talking they will know the direct place you are referring to right so i will share okay sir. that's very cv okay sorry okay so i've removed my markup so yeah so can you all see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? No. Yes, sir, we can see. Oh, okay. You can see my screen, right? Okay. Yes, I'm I can see. It. Yes, I can, I can see, see your screen. Huh. I can I see, see it. Great. Am I the only one? Great. <laughs> I'm not seeing. You. you can see the screen? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know how to help, but maybe you um, go out and come in again. Okay. Yeah. So, Kelechi, now you can continue. Now you have the... TV. Okay. I can see it now. All right, sir. So that was my first observation. Then secondly, the details here, gender, date of birth, marital status, um, those ones are not, are not necessary. So okay. I think the person removed the, the, the details, but entirely, that's those three details. We don't work with it so far. So far, I've not been working with those details. Okay. So, that's um, a very good point that's a very good point from kelechi so okay. the reason why the person did not put all the the details is just because the person wants it to be anonymous like we said but in reality the person intended to add gender male or female date of birth whatever that is marital status whatever that is the person wanted to add it but because we said make it anonymous the person removed it but i like your point you said that everything concerning the gender date of birth marital status is not necessary okay that's your opinion and i think i like it go ahead okay um then under the work experiences i think his, his arrangement is quite fine um though he's putting dates first before i don't think that matters though okay I didn't comment on that one so um my last one is okay okay i think i made comment the publication should actually if it's if possible we should come first before even the the academic qualifications okay if that's uh, that's just what since, since i i feel he's, he doesn't have any statement about research mm. maybe when he does personal statements he can put publication below it before starting academic qualification wow that is just a suggestion okay um then lastly um, from me yes sir hello go ahead go ahead 
Okay. The last part is this is hobbies. Maybe it can be more elaborate. Teaching. Uh, maybe how many students he has? Say how many? I don't know. There was a way you tailored my own before. Teaching teaches so so number of people in, or have taught so so number of people for so so period. Just to make it look like um, look more detailed a bit yeah. instead of just stating teaching, reading books, researching, solving problems. Maybe and specific, right? Like a statement. Yes, sir. Mm. Those are, wow. Those are my observations. Thank, right. thank you so much, wow. Kenichi. Thank you so much, Kenichi. I think you have really touched some important points. I, I'm excited that you are able to pick. Okay. Um, I'm excited I have that you to pick those points. <clears throat> okay. I have something to say, sir. Okay. I'll go All back right. to the screen. Okay, I'll go okay. back to what I'm sharing. All right. Okay, so I'll share it again. All right. So you can comment on it. Okay, I'm there now. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Great. So, All right, uh, like you, like uh, Kelechi said, um that career objective and the personal statement is not necessary at least um it makes the cv cumbersome and uh, i believe that thing should be diffused in your sop or whatever and uh, that kind of thing then for that um academic as in the academic qualification i i don't think uh, the this is going for a postgraduate study I don't think that secondary school that's the wire or NECO there is put there is necessary. I don't think it's necessary that this is going for post -doc doctorate. Uh, as in what I mean, as in what I mean, uh, postgraduate studies. So I don't think it's very necessary. And that, that, uh, that the uh, YEC and NECO stuff you put there is necessary. Like the secondary yes. school qualification. Yes, right? yes. I think you have to remove it totally. I think wow. it's not necessary. That's a good observation and a good point. Okay. All right. Then for that uh, work experience, he started with October 29. It should be, everything has to be consistent. Like uh, he put, not put, start putting, removing date again and be putting only the year. So if you have to put only the year, you have to be continuous. If you have to put for date, anything has to be consistent. So for that October 2019 to date, that May, this one, so this one should be maybe May 2016 to maybe June 2018. So you have to be continuous like that. Okay. So, so you're talking about being, being consistent, right? Yes, yes. For the month. I, yeah. think, I think it's the month, putting the month is necessary. Then you have to continue with it as in that way. Okay. That's my... Object. Then go down. I should right. Okay. Yes. Then for that um, publication. Publications. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For the publication, if you have, if you have to put the publication, must detail the publication, the name of the people that you work with. The journal, maybe if it has not been published, the name of the journal he pushed the work, maybe it's under review, he will put the name of the journal and you have to make it as a form of reference, as if he's referencing the the work. Mm. That's the, the name of the authors, he lists the name of the authors and the bold his name or her name, something like that. Then okay. put the title of the work. Then, if it's under review, he will put the work as in the place he sent the work for review that is under review. If it has published it, he will put the DOI of that publication hmm. for more detail. Wow. Interesting. Then, I hope, sorry, um, Madu Duba, Madu Duba, Boba, Madu Boba Betra. Madu Boba. I yes. hope, I hope the audience we are listening. These are very important points that are being highlighted here. And I'm, I'm very much excited that you guys are picking up these points 
from experience that you've had so far so I, i'm very excited go ahead then for that personal skills and attribute as a attributes or what what do you write there attributes attributes i think you have to put it uh, accomplishment instead of uh, that there's accomplishment what he has achieved or something like that okay personal skills you have to as in make it personal skill doesn't all i mean is that separate the personal skills from the accomplishment that he, he put uh, attributes just uh, accomplishment you it would diffuse it there will be different uh edition uh titles and they list the one of personal skills and the one of uh, accomplishment okay like kind of okay thing. like breaking it into two sections yes sections yes okay then for that hobbies i don't think it's necessary at all okay i don't think it's necessary at all because uh um going for post doctorate or something like that um the person that's listing all your your this is the most important thing is to to tell all your your cv based on what you are applying so writing teaching and this we are going to see that skills in your what you have done so far so from your achievement or from your work experience you will know your hobbies you will know what you can what you have done so what you want to see is your your not what you know how to do but what you have achieved do you understand so yeah. what you have achieved so far that's your cv so teachings this and this and this and i don't think it's necessary at all so if you are saying that uh, your hobby is research what have you researched they, they are going to that's that, that the things do you understand what i mean i get so, it uh, so i don't think you have to remove it totally i get totally. it i think you you also you have made a very good point here you said Tailor your CV based on what you are applying, uh, applying for. for. Yes, it's not like one CV works it for every application. Every, yes, exactly. Wow, exactly. that is a very nice observation and a very nice point. Yes. Any other? So you thing? have to be very short and uh, uh, this in captivating. So let me go up. Let me see. There is something I want to see. And that okay. uh, uh, that plays the road certification. Certification, okay. Yes, okay. Oh, first the certification is here, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Those certificates, okay. Okay, though they are very okay, but I think uh, you have to look for the important ones. Or oh, let me say those that are important for the application as i said it tell us it based on what is applying for the necessary as in the certificate that uh, that speaks for the what is applying for i think that's okay instead of making the cv very lengthy and all that so i think uh, you have to look for the appropriate uh certificate that uh, that explains what is going for that you understand what i mean I get it, yeah. Uh, that's that's my own observation. I think that's the only thing I can say for now. Wow, wow, this is this is mind blowing. So I will stop sharing. I just want let us just um talk a little bit before we come back here. Okay. Wow. In fact, you and Kelechi, you guys have almost you have touched almost everything that I plan to touch. I am very much happy because I can see great mentors coming up. I can see few like great mentors being raised in you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you, sir. It's not just that you are you are showing where to be improved. You are giving reasons why it should be improved. That is for me. That is the most important thing in mentoring like you, you don't just say this is bad or this is not okay you are giving the reason why it should be in this way or in that way i think that is very um nice okay uh, so i think um people here someone like onovo 
should be a new member, so he must maybe he didn't have access to this CV before now. So I would not think he will have um, something to comment. Any other question? Do we have any other comment on CV number two? Any other comment from the audience? Okay, so I will go. I will go to the. I will go back there and I will show my comments and we'll discuss more there. So I'm sharing my screen again. Good. So if you if you if you watch. I turn down I I turn down my comments. I'm gonna pop up my comments now. Okay. So these are my comments. So I will start from the title. So the title started with anonymous anonymous, which I believe is maybe the first name and the last name. That is very good. So for, for that title, I have, I am adding something I said, provide contact information. The way it appears now, contact information is missing. Yes, yes. And that contact information includes your mailing address, your email address, maybe your phone number. And when you want to add your phone number, you have to be aware that you are adding a number that will be that is going to an international community. So make sure you put your area code or the country code, like for Nigeria, put plus two three four for your number. So that is very important. Then recently people add their linking um, details or their linking account. You can also add your if you have a research data account. In case the person wants, in case the, the the person wants to go and check you on research gate to see how um how productive you are in terms of research things like that, they can also go there and check. So, but the main the major thing here is your mailing address and your email address and your phone number. So that can be added to make this heading complete. Again, I always say that when we make comment, we also want to bring some positive things. What did the person do well? I like the consistency of the headings. So you see all the headings, the, the main headings, they are all in capital or uppercase, and that consistency was taken along throughout. For me, that is commendable. When I received this, CV, the margin, I think the, 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 the margin was so small. So I had to format the margin to become one inch on the left, the right, the top, and the bottom. I think that is that should be the standard because if you make the margin too small, sometimes it, it's, it, it's not a standard. I think the standard of margin is one inch in all directions. So I corrected that. Then if you go to the career objectives and the personal statement, I agree with Elechi and Maduduba and I stated it here. I said, I am not sure if these add anything to the content of your CV. I suggest to delete them. So Kelechi and Madu Buba, we are on the same page here. Which is good because if you don't like it, Madhu Buba don't like it, and I don't like it, that means it's likely the person that will review it will not find it interesting. So that's it's um, something that the person that owns this CV and every other person on the on our platform should be aware, or anybody that will go through our that will watch this video should be aware. Then the issue on gender date of birth and marital status. I agree totally with Kelechi and I have commented, I said, unless specified in the application, 
never add this in your CV, especially for schools abroad. I know that maybe in schools, for schools in Nigeria, you might, they, they might ask you to add your gender, your state of origin, you know, all those type of details that don't really add anything. But for this type of application, you don't need to add. Can you see my screen? Can you see my yes, screen? Sir, okay, good. Because I just went out to add um, somebody. So for if you are applying for a school in Nigeria, or if your CV is tailored for Nigeria or your country, if your country still requires gender date of birth, you can add. But when you are applying to schools abroad, gender, date of birth, marital status, they don't need it. This is because people here, they don't accept your application because you are a lady or you are a guy or whatever, or because the first thing they look at is not your age. The first thing they look at is not whether you are married or not. What they look at is your accomplishment, your passion for that position they are advertising so gender does not show your passion date of birth does not show your passion your mitral status does not show your passion for an application right so it just boils down to say that what should come on your cv should be what matters what tells what passes an information what passes a message about who you are in terms of your academic accomplishment you can also add your extracurricular activities because I don't want to have a graduate student who is also boring, <laughs> like right? I don't want to have somebody who is just research, everything re research, because the academic work, world is more than research also. That is why if you have a teaching skill, if you have teaching skill to add, you can add. If you have hobbies, like you can play instrument, like piano, you can read, like, like reading, like that, like the person added, I think it's fine. It's, it's, you can add them, but at the end, right? If you like traveling, you can add. If you know how to drive, because some positions need somebody who can drive, right? So that you can add. So that's, uh, there's nothing wrong. But this gender, date of birth, marital status, number of children, <laughs> they are not necessary. Okay. I hope we are following. Yes. So let's go to the next one. The academic qualifications. First of all, I want to say that I agree with Madhububa. Your secondary school, if you see, I, I, I commented on it. I said, unless specified in the application, you may not add this. So the secondary school, it's not really needed. Again, if it's for in a, a, an application that you are doing in Nigeria and you are applying to a school in Nigeria, sometimes they just need some of all these details. You can add it, right? But for schools abroad, if it's not stated, just start with your, just go from your first degree, your second degree, and above. You can, if, the, if you have any certification that promote your interest in that given application. Let's say you have done an online certification. You can add it. Let's say you have a certification in Python programming, certification in solid state physics or whatever, solid state matter, according to my physics guy here. You can add things like that. They are very, they will, they will help your application somehow. But the secondary school one is not really needed. So under the academic qualifications, I am changing that title to education. Just education is good enough. At least we have reduced one word from that, from the two words. So just put education there. Then here, University of Ibadan, Ibadan, or your state, the, this, the, the person that owns this CV is consistent with using a lower case for state all through the application but i think i like the consistency but i think that states should be in capital yeah. the s should be in capital so i commented on that i said write your s in capital sorry i'm gonna allow somebody in okay i'll go back to the screen can you see the screen 
Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Are we still there? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Okay, good. Thank you. So the state should be in capital. I checked this, I Googled this, and I said that most times where you have or your state, Lagos State, Timo State, the S is in capital. So I think that should put that in capital. It's not a big thing there, especially, especially if you are consistent, but I think to, for completeness, it's very important. Then uh, under the, the qualifications where you have your Masters of Science in bracket MSc, Pharmacognosy, I think it's just like a tautology. Master of Science or MSc, any one of them, the person knows that you have a master's, right? So they just leave one of them. So for, 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 for the sake of precision, MSc for me is good. So just keep MSc, Pharmacognosy. Then I am questioning this addition here, this PhD grade. 6.6 7.0. I, I, I don't really understand what that means. And the person is not, uh, I don't expect the person to explain to me because we said that we submitted this CV based on anonymity. But my comment is this. I am not too sure what this means, what this means. Did you get a PhD grade for an MSc degree? That is my question. Then the lesson here is, the lesson here is avoid anything that brings doubt to your CV. Avoid anything that brings doubt to your CV. This is because you will not be present to clarify the meaning of any ambiguous thing. So remember, if somebody, if they are reviewing your CV, you will not be there to say, oh, they, they are not going to be asking you, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous, what does PhD grade for a master's degree mean, right? So that is why you should try as much as you can to be clear with everything you present, not only on your CV, in your writing generally. Just try to be as clear as possible. Avoid too much vocabulary like jargons, right? Use simple words to express yourself so that people will understand what you're saying. So that same comment goes for the bachelors of technology. So I just change it to BTEC and that goes. Then I know Nathaniel, we have a point here. We ask you to highlight your, maybe highlight your, maybe the, the grade, highlight something so that we will see because 4.21 over five, it's a very proud, I think it's something you should be proud of. So you can highlight it. So the person, once the person comes here, they will quickly, it will draw their attention to, do, to these nice grades that um, you have. 6.6 .6 of 7.0, 4.21 of 5.0. Highlight them just to draw attention. Okay. So that is what we have said there. If you have any question along the line, please don't fail to ask. Draw my attention and ask. So let's go to the work experience. Under the work experiences, as the person um, stated here, I made a comment. I said, what about research experience? So I'm asking the person to add research experience for their master's degree because for you to have done the master's means that there must be some research experience that you have gotten. Then what about leadership and volunteer? This is just a general comment for the whole CV. I'm not saying that they should come here, but I'm just saying I did not see your leadership or volunteer experience. Okay, I'm going to add somebody again. I did not see the person's leadership and volunteer experience. I did not see the award the person has received. So unless the person don't have any, but I'm just raising that so that the person for completeness, the person can consider adding some of those leadership experiences that they have gathered along the line. Then for the work experience, again, I don't have any problem with having your dates before your whatever work you did. That is this 
this format for me doesn't really matter, but I don't present my CV li like this, but this is also fine. So I agree with Bertram that says that you should be consistent. If you want to add months and year, follow through. So for the, to avoid that, it's, it's just okay to just stay with the year, right? Just stay with the year. When, you, when there's an interview, if somebody has to interview you, then the person will start can start asking you when in 2019. But for the sake of your CV, just stating the year you have done that thing, I think that is good enough, right? So you just put that. Then I like the way the person's uh, the progression. So the person started with the school and the location, then the position, then the role. But I feel that for the role, the person is uh, the person did not identify too much roles for the position. I think there are some there are some things the person did or is doing that are not captured on these roles here. It's because as a teacher, you have just thought that you teach courses such as basic science, agricultural science and biology so this was this was what um, kelechi was saying to so how many students so kelechi it is here that you can bring that no, not in the hobby right so here that's where you can really you can because you want to be you want to show the scale i said this before in our previous cv cafe you want to show the scale of what you are doing because anybody can teach but if I know that you can teach 50 students, you can teach 100 students. For me, that's if I want to pick two, two candidates that have the same qualifications in everything, I can go to their teaching strength. I see that candidate A can teach only 10 students. Why candidate B can teach 50 students? If that scale matters to me, I can pick candidate B just because of that ability to handle much students, right? So that is where that scale thing comes in. So that we have said there. So I just try to help this person to expand what type of roles can be added. So after adding that you taught these courses to this number of students, as a teacher, some of the skills you should also add will be that you prepared lecture notes, which is a very good skill also for a graduate student because you're going to be preparing a lot of documents. Because for you to prepare lecture notes means that you have to read, you have to read the most updated um, teaching materials to prepare your notes, which is also what you'll be doing in your graduate study. So that is why you should stress such points. And most times, as a graduate student, you can also be a teaching assistant. So you can be, you'll be required to teach students, undergraduate students, you'll be, re you'll be required to grade assignments and exams, things like that. So you can show those strengths here. So you can also add graded assignments and exams and much more things you should identify that you do as a teacher. So I help this person to put those ones here. So I just said, at least mention three to four rows mention three to four rows so that you also you don't want to also make it too you don't want to uh, make it too bulky your cv then the next thing i am so i i'm just i just try to reward the expression like here the person says part of the rule is arrangement of biological specimens in taxonomical order I've said this time with that number that you should use a direct statement. Arranged, that's what you did. It's like saying, I arranged biological specimens in taxonomic order. So instead of saying arrangement of, it doesn't show action. Your CV statement should read more of action. So arranged biological statement in taxonomic order. And you should use this format for all your rules, all the rules that you all the rules that you um, found yourself or that you performed. 
the same thing happens here attended to customers yes i listen attentively to customers basic challenges and provided the necessary solutions all these things just means that you attended to customers right so that is what i think that is the big thing there then I also partook in the registration of MTN customers, MTN SIM card. I think I, I narrowed it down to registered customer SIM card. You partook in the registration. The action there is that you registered, right? You partook in the registration. It's just a, a way of taking the English, expanding English out of nothing. So to be more direct, say, I registered customer SIM card. So this can apply to other roles that you do. So I, I here, I see that you don't mention the location of the company. When you mention the school, you mention the location. So somebody know that the University of Ibadan is in Nigeria, is in Ibadan, Nigeria. But where is this MTN company located? We don't know. The next one, Independent National Electoral Commission. I think they also have locations. So you should also mention the location just for consistency. It's not mentioned here. Then the same thing happened here. I presided, you don't need to say I, 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 just go ahead and say what you did. Presided over Nigeria general election. This looks like a very big statement. I presided over an judgment election. I don't know if as an ad hoc staff that is that you have that power to preside over the election, but if that if that is what the person did, it's fine. So held at Alausa. I presided over an judgment election at Alausa or your state. Okay, then here National Youth Service Corps for me is not a school. It's not the name of any company. It's not the name of. So I think what I know that you did this when you were doing your national youth service school. But I think for your CV, just go ahead and state the school. You worked in a school, Olivet Baptist High School, or your or your state. Again, I I like this one that you now keep in, under your position. You kept core member, which sounds good, right? So as a core member, you worked in this school, and what was your role? You taught chemistry to that number of students and like we said in other places as a teacher you can also state other roles that you did that you performed here to make this better then again location for your for this place is lacking i also want to state something that because this person don't have don't have research experience i try to identify some roles the person has done that can be added as research experience one of them is this place this center for the person worked as a laboratory scientist at the center for genetic engineering and biotechnology i think whatever you did in this type of lab you can extrapolate research experience for it from this very role and expand what you have done. Because like here, you said, I carried out some laboratory procedures, including extraction of active principles. I don't know what that active principles means, but what it means um, for drugs and vaccine, vaccine development. So I just reduce that to say extracted active principles for drug and vaccine development. I don't know what this otherwise that you wrote here mean. It says from plant materials and otherwise. What does otherwise mean? I don't know. If there's, it doesn't have a meaning, you just remove it or state what is meaningful. That will really help. Again, like I said, if you have any question along the line, don't fail to draw my attention to it. If you have a comment, don't fail to draw my attention to it. It's a cafe. Okay, then this Dana Pharmaceutica, you worked as a quality control officer. Again, I've reduced the rule to make it more direct for you. Something else I'm identifying is unnecessary use of abbreviations 
standard operating procedure you are putting in bracket SOP. But this SOP is not used anywhere else on the CV. Then there's no need of just abbreviating SOP just for fancy. No. The same thing happens to all these abbreviations here. NAPA, NSBS, NIM. You don't need them. Just you have written the names. It's okay. Right? Abbreviation, if you don't use them, if you want to use abbreviation, let's say you, 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 you are using this in another part of the document, then you can use the abbreviation. So unnecessary use of abbrevi abbreviations should be avoided. I have changed the professional affiliation to professional membership. And in line with what somebody like Nathaniel will advise, on that professional membership, you, you may want to state your category of membership. Are you a corporate member? Are you a fellow? Are you a student member? Then what year? Here yeah, I said specify class of membership and when you join, delete unnecessary abbreviation. What year did you join these professional bodies? Because it matters when you join. Are you still a member or you just joined and left? So you might put the date. I want to put the date that you joined. That would be good. Okay. On that certification, at least I said, I like that you arrange things chronologically. I think Maduduba also said that. So we, we are happy that you arrange things 20, from 2018. We can see how you move from 20, 2008 up till 2018. That is fine. But that also shows that since 2018, you've not developed yourself for like three years. What happened? You've not developed yourself for like three years. What is going on? <laughs> so that also has, it has, it speaks a lot. So here, I am thinking that these certifications, I don't, I don't really see any great certification that is happening here. You're just showing us certificate of attendance, certificate of participation, certificate of this. I think here, you might want to change this title to professional development and rephrase all these, um, all the sections. Like you can just go ahead and state that you attended a workshop, workshop on enhancing teaching and research in pharmacology, then organized by Nigerian Association of Pharmacists in Academia, University of Ibadan. The same thing happens to every other place. So these are, lot, these are just like showing that you are not a static person. You have been developing yourself professionally. But the way you are putting them, certificate of participation, it doesn't really show anything. This, this certificate doesn't really show anything. Just go ahead and state what that training was, the year you attended it, and who organized it. That's for me, it's more powerful. Then all these abbreviations, I am deleting them. I'm deleting them. So just go ahead and re rewrite that section. Then you are showing under the certification proficiency certificate in management. In management, I am asking, is this different from the professional membership of NIM? Avoid repetition. So if it's the same thing, you're already a member of NIM that you stated here. So that's, that membership is the certificate, right? So why are you repeating it as certification? So there's no need for repeating it. And I agree with Maduduba, Maduduba that says that you should add the things that are relevant to your application. Like I see that you attended a, 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 a training on, on Flourish Beauty, on Flourish Beauty Institute, like organized by Flourish Beauty Institute. Maybe that was how you went to learn how to make um, cream to beautify your face. And you're putting it here. But if you think it's important, you can put it, but just put those things that are important for the application that you're making. Then the, the, the almighty publication, I agree with Madhu, Madhu Duba and Kelechi. I have also stated here, I said, where was this published? 
Who are the authors? What year was it published? You can present this using one of the referencing styles, e.g. APA 7th edition. So that, I think, will help this person a, 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 a lot to improve this publication. And for an academic CV, your publications and research should be prioritized. Present them as soon as possible. What does that mean? This publication should be moved. It should be moved to immediately after your education. After your education, which is very important, then put your publication, then put your research experience, or put your education, research experience, and publication. But I think education, publication, research experience, then work experience, that would be a very good way to go. So whether you have, whether does this person have, does this person has research experience? I think this person has, I think, because I have identified some things here that can be added as research experience. Like here, again, this, you worked as a herbarium manager. You were arranging biological specimen in taxonomic car order. For me, you can extract research experience from that project and use it to beef up your research experience. Okay, so we have seen certification, then we have looked at publication. I'm advising that you should move it to where it matters. Then your personal skills and attributes. You can, I think for me, there's nothing wrong having your personal skills. For me, I have my personal skill very early, actually. I have it very early, very even maybe after education. I think I have my personal skills somewhere there. And my personal skills sometimes is not, it highlights those skills that are very relevant to the position I'm applying to. That is what, that's how I see it. Let's say if I know how to use some instruments that the position requires, like I know how to use something like um, high performance liquid chromatography, I know how to do maybe Corel draw, and I know that it's needed for this position. I want to state that very clear i want to say it very clearly at this onset so that person that that thing can catch the interest of the recruiter to say oh he has this skill then the person will read my my um cv and see we have applied that skill so you might want to move this up the personal statement the personal skills up and tailor it according to madubu but tailor it to the application in terms of hobby, it's like extracurricular activities. There's nothing wrong. And the way the person has presented it here is fine. You don't have to, like, let you have said where we should make, we should expand the teaching. It's not, it's not here in the hobby. So this hobby is fine. If the person wants, I think it's fine. I just try to make, remove all these unnecessary uppercase letters. Most times I don't like, if you don't need upper case, don't just use them. Sometimes they make the work look very untidy. Like here, why, why did you put upper case for both? Upper case for Vara. It doesn't, it, it just makes the work look, look um, untidy. Okay. That is what I have for this person. Any comments, any question, any addition for people who just joined us? I will stop sharing. If you need me to sh um, show this document, I will come back to it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, Thank we are there. So Thank you so that much. That was really deep. No problem. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much. So I did, I did learn a lot, sir. Thank you so much. Again, that is my opinion, which tallies with most of your opinions. And it's open for more discussion. So if anybody has extra comment, like Natania, you just joined. If you have a comment, you can say it. Rachel, um, you have a comment. Miracle, you have a comment. Onovo, Victor, if you have a question or a comment, this is a cafe, right? It's not like me, not that I know it all. 
I'm also learning. Okay. Okay. Um, sir. Yeah. There is something I want to say on that ad hoc uh, stuff he wrote. She, uh, the person wrote. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking that um, the person should uh, put exactly what he or she did. Maybe a uh, presiding officer or assistant presiding officer instead of writing the ad hoc just state exactly what the person did and executed okay because yeah that's a very good point please madu yes you have this cv can you please enter your comments the way i've done mine because i'm going to send this to the i'm going to forward this to the group the person will, will pick it up if you have time can you append your comments on that document? Let it not be that it is only my comment, right? If okay. everybody appends, if everybody appends their comment, that will help this person to see that, oh, everybody is having the same concern about this issue. So it must be important, right? Yes. So please, Elechi, the same thing as you. If you have the time, append your comment on the document. Madhububa, append your comment. Nathania, append your comment. Rachel, Miracle, Onovo, Clement, append your comment and send to the group. That shows that we are all doing our part. Yeah. All right, sir. Uh, that Good. will be okay. All right, all right. All right. Nathania, you have something to say on this on the CV? No. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So, uh, in the next one minute or two minutes, I'm going to see if anybody has a question based on the CV. If not, we'll move straight to Nathaniel to demonstrate to us how to find a professor on LinkedIn. Um, sir, okay, sir, something... sorry. Okay. Somebody posted a question on the on chat? call messages. That's the group chat, yes. So I was trying to respond. I don't know if I did a can check it, sir. Okay. Okay, I should read out the question. Yeah, but I, I can see it now. I can see it now. It says, I really want to know if personal details is necessary. And you have answered it right. Personal details needed are full names, address, email, LinkedIn, gender, date of birth, local government area, not necessary. Yeah, I think that is, that is it. And the person that asked this question, please, when I post my comments, I'm going to post this document that you just I just used to show you guys. I'll post it on the group, on the WhatsApp group. You can download it. You can see the comment, right? So you you see what my comment shows, what is necessary, what is not necessary, right? Then we also have we have um, a I I have shared like a template for CV from one of the best universities in the world, from Stanford University. Stanford University is one of the best in the world. So if they provide a template for us, I don't see why we should not be using that template. That's why we should use that template that I sent. Use any method, any, any method there, or any of the templates there, it, it's very nice. The reason is that that university is one of the best in the world. So anything they, have, anything they prepare is like a standard. Clement, does that answer your question? Or mute yourself. Does that answer your question? Yes, Prof. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And Kelechi, thank you for answering. Um, Prof. Okay. Um, there's something you said about margin. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how you imagine. Is that very important? As in, is he something that have to be 
how will I put it? Because there are some CV that we should put it in a normal listing. It can be able to occupy, like when you use uh, something like uh, writing the date or the year after the, 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 the statement, it won't be able to contain, it will enter the next line. So, uh, broadening the, the C, uh, what do you call it, the margin, I think it will help to uh, make the thing very okay. I don't know. Okay. Instead of uh, using, so I don't know okay. whether it's very. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I, I get I, I get your question. So it's like when you I uh, what I am happy that I'm speaking with Professor Madububa. You have a lot of publications, right? Thank you. When sir. you publish your work, you see that the, the journals they have a standard, right? Yes, sir. Will you say because you want to increase your number of your writing or your work, you go and deviate from their standard. You don't deviate from the standard, right? Yes. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That, that w- if they tell you that they need five pages, yes. you have to make sure that your work is five pages. Yes. You will yes. not say because you want to make it five pages, you're going to expand the margin to enter more. They also have a requirement for margin. Right? Exactly. Yes, yes. So, I find it very untidy when people expand their margin to maybe 0.5 inch. It just for me looks untidy. And for me, it also shows it's like trick. You are playing trick. You are being tricky. Okay. So anything where you're writing can fit into that normal margin. And that, that again, should force you to be precise. If I show you my CV, my CV as of today is like 15 pages. <laughs> but i'm not saying that yours should be because that is because of the level i am now that, yes, is, required. Yeah. that is required for an academic cv right but for you yes. your cv should be between one to three pages and even two is okay right yes. one to three pages is fine for at this level that you guys are so, but expanding the margin for me will not add anything, it just makes the work look untidy. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, even, even when you even when you write your cover letter, don't expand the margin, keep it use the normal the, the normal the standard margin is one inch everywhere. And some applications, they will even state it. They will tell you the margin. They will tell you the, the, the line number, the line spacing, things like that, the font size. They will tell you that it matters to them. Okay. Like, what of the font? Is there anyone? Okay. Is there anything you can do about the font? No, you can use. Uh, you can just. I don't. I don't. I, did, I, I. I don't comment on the font unless the application you are unless the application you are making specifies that you should use a particular font. Maybe they say use. Calibri or use Times New Roman um, 12, um, point, point 12, 12 point, something like that. You should yes, use that yes. else. Just use anything that you like. You can also okay. do, you can also Google the, what people like most when they write later. But me, I, I, I like using Times New Romans. Exactly. Yeah, I like using Times New Romans. Yes, so. yeah. And nobody has complained about it. Even when I send my work for publications, I would like to send Times New Roman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so something I want to uh, clarify. So if fonts you want to use, just also be consistent with it. Don't use, like, for the top, you're using Arial. The next page, you're using Times. Next one, you're using Calibri. That inconsistency will not be looked with good mind yeah okay now another thing i want to say that what if someone that have a lot of maybe your work is under review or under revision that kind of thing yeah when putting it in cv are you going to put it on the top based on it's still recent or will you put it under since it has not been published yet so what what i do my my personal rule is if the work has not been published I don't put it first. I put the ones that have been, that, that have been published first. Okay. Yeah, because that's for sure. People want to see what has been done. The one that has not been oh. published, I just add them 
as additional and i don't put them first yeah okay. that is so my why put why putting it will you put it the school and uh, maybe the place is under review or anything or you just put general view of that oh i the same way you will put your published work the same way your the, the so like you start with the authors okay the, authors, yes. the year the title okay. where right. you have sent it to publication so the the journal then okay. you just put in brackets under review or something like that yeah okay okay, okay. yeah all right thank you so much sir. No thank problem. you prof you have really you have really done well so. thank you very much so okay. i would i would love to see people's work if you have any if you have prepared your work we can always see it and see that you it's in line with what we have been saying so any other question on the cv or any comments okay since we don't have any, so we'll try to close this meeting very soon after Nathaniel must have given us his, um, what he has for us. So with this, I will welcome Nathaniel for his section. Nathaniel, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Hello, sorry, sir. Okay. Um, please, I have a question. Okay. Not only you can um, share your screen while he's asking his question. Okay. Okay. I wanted to ask if, for example, um, you are learning a particular skill, maybe for example related to what you're applying for, and you don't have a full knowledge of that skill, can you can it be added to your CV? Yes, I think it is. It, yes, once you have enrolled for a skill, you can add it on your CV because for sure you're gonna get you're gonna grab that skill. You'll grab that skill very, and you 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 already started being trained, right, for that skill. So you can yes, add. Sir. It. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. The only thing is that when you've been in, when you're because the reason one thing one thing about your CV and your cover letter is. We just want to get to be interviewed, right? Yes, sir. We want to get to a point where you are scheduled for an interview. Because if your CV is okay, your cover letter is okay, the professor might say, okay, let me interview you. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> what are you showing? I see Kelechi, I see myself. Are we, we are all your friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Victor, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, so the floor is for Nathaniel. All right, thank you, sir. Um, good evening, everyone. Too sorry for joining late. I left for somewhere. Okay, um, once you open your, your LinkedIn prof, um, account, possibly the person must have um, filled the necessary sessions. I'm sure you can't even finish it at once. Mine, I'm still doing more. So, but I know I've, um, I've filled the, a substantial um, proportion of it. So you can go to, sometimes what I do is search the professors, for instance, the recent search that I have, I can search for professors in food science, and it will take me to to show me some of them and their their schools. So as I mean, I, I click on this Shivima. Uh, I can go to and click on connect. From connection, it may not the person may not connect with me that that very day, depending on the time the person comes online. Sometimes most of them will definitely. Uh, go through your profile before accepting your request. So it's normal. And then once you go down, you can even see the person's friends, other connections, and endorsements, and some of the person's likes, like the, these universities. You can also like the school. Possibly they may be offering the same course. Then from there, you'll be getting news updates from the school. And then through the person's connection too, like these ones, people also viewed all these ones 
checking out these names can also help if they are also in the same field you now you equally send them requests and then once the person accepts your uh, once the person grants your request the next thing is to message yeah here is where i normally message the person there are some messages i've sent earlier this is the kind of message i sent let me check okay this is simon jude remember the time i sent him message okay I sent him this message in June 2020. So this is a kind of very sh uh, short message. Dear, Dr. Uh, dear Professor Jude, I hope you are doing well and staying safe because of the pandemic last year. Thanks for granting my request. I'm, I'm a graduate of soil and water engineering seeking MSc position in environmental and water resource engineering. Going through your profile, exploits and contributions, I got fascinated and would like to join your team. If you Permit me, I would send in my CV and transcript for your evaluation. So he later responded, I regret there are currently no va um, vacancies and given the current situation, unlikely to be so in the future. So I, I, I still replied his message. So, but though I didn't push for that again this year to know if he has got funding, something like that. So from there, once the person responds, is also another way of creating the relationship. Some, sometimes they will, I, I've sent to some of them that said, okay, let me see your CV, send it to my email. So I sent to the email and still got back to the LinkedIn and then notified the person that I've sent the email with social so, uh, subject in case the person has so many other mails. Having, uh, having established that communication would um, prompt the person to check my mail to see if something like that reaches him. So that's just the simplest way I've been doing. Sometimes I also browse schools. You can also search for schools. For instance, um, University of Alberta or University of Saskatchewan. University of Alberta. Yeah. Now, sorry, let me cut in a bit. For okay. some of us that are using our phones, you can double click on the screen to zoom in closer. Because okay. I notice it's quite smaller. Okay. Okay. So, um, University of Alberta, you can follow if that's your school of interest. Once you follow the school, it will even show you some of the lecturers. So, from there, you'll be getting in contact, you'll be connecting with those ones in your, in the department you're uh, looking for. So, from there, you can just connect with so many, as many as possible. Some of them may not reply your messages. Some of them will even uh, ignore your connection. Maybe if the person is not that active on LinkedIn, then you shouldn't expect the person's um, response immediately. But some of them, once they come online, they will check people. Most times they will view your profile. That's why you need to really work your profile very well, work it out well, so that if the person sees it, it will be something presentable and attractive. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So if anyone has any question about this, you can ask. I will drop the, the kind of messages I've been sending to them on, on the group so, so that you can use it to edit yours and make it, uh, make it even better. That's all I have, sir. Wow. Any question for Nathaniel? Yes. So Good, evening. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Nat. Go Good evening, sir. Go on. <laughs> Uh, please, I want to know if they can be messaged on a weekend like this. Like, I sent a connection to one of, uh, to a professor, and she accepted my connection just today, and I don't know if a message can be sent to her today or De maybe. Yeah, yeah definitely. Just with definitely, yeah. LinkedIn is just like, um, is is a kind of professional and normal social media. So, just like Twitter and all that. So, uh, they, do, at least LinkedIn, they can actually access it using their phone. Not necessarily when they get to the office to use, just like email, unlike email, sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I agree with Nathaniel. You can, anytime you just send message to anybody, the, 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 the mindset is that we all know that people exist at different time zones right so 
and I will not I will not penalize you because you sent me a message on a Saturday because I don't know that that's that Saturday might be your Sunday, maybe your Friday. Like as we are now, people in China, they are already in their Sunday, I think so. Yes, sir. So that's those those mindsets just the person doesn't know where you are coming, where you are sending the message from. And you also don't know where the person is, something like that. So it doesn't matter. This is just this is an online world. Put the message anytime you want you wake up, put it the message. When the person comes, the person will see it. If the person is interested, the person will contact you. If the person is not interested, the person will not contact you. That is it. But you will do yourself harm if you don't put any message. You have to put a message there. Yeah, one more thing to um this thing work uh, LinkedIn, I think it works like Facebook, uh yeah. and other social media. So you can be into um academia and then be be connecting with people that are like all these musicians and all that. You'll be seeing more of their own uh network. So but if you connect with those in your own area too, you'll be seeing I'm not saying that you shouldn't have friends from other um sectors. I I, I have mixed friends like that, but if you are still looking for professors you should think more of tagging more uh, tagging along with professors in your field and all that great any other question for nathaniel or for the any question based on linkedin thing okay i have a question sir okay nathaniel while you were uh, going through showing us how to message a professor i noticed when you search invest of our better there mm -hmm. are some people their profile were, was showing graduate research assistant uh, i don't know instead of professors can we also get information how reliable or how effective is it when we message graduate research assistant those are not professors yet so we will be working in a lab with a professor mm -hmm. Good. Let me, let me, let me, this is, uh, this, um, Dr. Joseph Nade is from, um, um, I think, uh, I think Texas A&M University. Yeah. Kingsville. I can remember the last time I said, the first time I sent him message this is the message I sent to him. Yeah. In fact, this one, I even ended with, uh, Biko and Remarkin one name. So I had to just come in our normal Igbo, the, uh, Igbo language. So he he responded with this. Talk to the talk to this professor about PhD in environmental engineering, David Ramirez. So I I actually sent to the man and he told me that he had no uh position open position at the at that moment that time. So I replied to uh, Dr. Nadi, because why I sent to him is he is the uh, chief, I uh, think, assistant lab uh, manager. So you can actually even have sent to University of Alberta some students as well. So they they even help me too. So sometimes they even tell you this professor. I'm working with this professor, but we don't have any open position in our lab now. However, you can try to so person. He's also in good time with my professor, and they do discuss together. So if you can, sometimes even in your letter. You can, if a, pro, a professor can refer you to another, so in your letter, you can also mention him that you reached out to social professor and he said he would be a better fit, that he doesn't have something like that. I've tried some things like that and I said the person doesn't have funding. But if he has funding, the next thing is for him, uh, it to, he, the person will proceed for okay, thank you. So, my question now, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, based on your own experience, uh, maybe you should read how effective that is, and then I will want to ask Prof if that's actually a good way to go. I know not all professors uh, enjoy you going behind or through someone to reach reach them. Some prefer direct no, no, no. approach. No, yeah, I understand. Like, I don't know, but I'm just saying that based on what I have experienced, so that's the disclaimer there. But what I'm saying is that um i've reached i've sent normal code mails to some professors who said at the moment they don't have but their colleagues you can reach out to social person because they are already retiring one told me recently was it last uh, in august that sorry that he's already he will be retiring in by next year so he wouldn't be taking any new graduate students however i can reach out to social person that the, the his work is also in line with what he's doing you understand so 
for such person that is already um, that has already established such um, a level of rank or rank in the department, when I was sending email to the other person too, I I mentioned him. I was really um, I was referred to, to him by Susu Professor because he was he told me that he would be retiring soon, something like that. So and he replied me that he doesn't have funding at the moment. So it, it depends anyway. The only, right. the only one the, the only one I think it doesn't work most times is if he's a student. So you may not uh, because he's, a, he's still a student. In fact, in fact, you, you, the student won't even give you the the um, the opportunity to even mention him in, in your letter. We just tell you that he doesn't think he doesn't think that such is relevant. Just go ahead and send your email. If he has a position, he would let you know. But for professors, I think you can also because sometimes they are friends or they are they work together in some aspects. Nabuko, we see your hand. Um, so I'm coming. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get to you. Kadechi, do you still want me to say something? So you can say. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, no, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I think I, I think there is no um, there's nothing written on stone here. It, it depends. It, it it all depends. So. When I was a PhD student, I know that I have spoken with my supervisor about somebody had, that said they have emailed you, but you are not responding. Can you please check your email to see if you can at least look at their profile? And that's made the professor to check, right? So that's based on my personal relationship. And that also can happen. The person reached me on email, via email because I he found out that I am a student of this professor, right? So I was able to do the linking. I spoke with my um, supervisor to say that this person said he has been contacting you, but he has not heard from you. Would you like to check your email to see what the message is like? Whether he will check or not, at least that linking, I have broken the link, right? I have enhanced the link. This also happened when, when my younger brother got admission to McGill. He has emailed this professor several times, but this professor did not reply. But along the line, when I became a TA with the professor, Based on my achievement, the professor says see that he ha she has seen that I am an achiever, right? So I was able to now say that, oh, this person said he has been emailing you, but you have not responded. I think the person is a very good student. He has done this. He has done that. Would you like to check your email and respond to the person? Sometimes I even say, okay, the person should send me the document. Let me forward to the professor. It comes with a price. If the person gets admitted and doesn't do well, my reputation with the professor will be at stake, right? If the person does well, then I'll be like, wow, I've recommended a good student to the person. So you can use a student that is that knows the professor. You can try it. It also depends on the comfort of that student. If the student is comfortable, to speak to a professor on your behalf is fine. If the student is not comfortable, don't take it further because it depends on the comfortability. Some students might not be comfortable to do that for you. They may be like, oh, if I do that, it might be like I'm too forwarding, something like that. Don't count it on the, on the person. But for me, I've recommended people, even in Israel, I've recommended somebody in Israel. I, I'll, I'll say it here, like joy. I actually recommended Joy. The, the professor that Joy is working with is my supervisor in Israel. I recommended her. This, like, not recommendation letter, WhatsApp. I sent this message on WhatsApp. Say, I have a student that is very good that would fit into your team. So things like that work. That's why the catch there is that as a student, like most of you now will be going abroad to school. Once you get there, something that you should keep in mind is that you are an ambassador. 
if you do things well, you're going to favor other people. But if you become a low-ranging student, you'll be affecting the next generation. Because somebody who accepts a student from Nigeria or a student from Futo, and the Futo student did not do well, will be a kind of reserved when another Futo student is contacting him or her. But if you have become, a, if you are a photo student and you do well, or you are a student from Uniben and you do well, if this professor in the future sees another photo student or another student from Uniben, the professor will use your, the experience he or she has had with you to look at the next person. Even if the person doesn't have too much good grade, but with in mind that one time photo white or one time Uniben student did well, that sends a very big message. Maybe I've digressed, but I think I'm, I'm using this opportunity to bring out that very strong point. Yes, sir. Okay, I don't know if this helps your question. Yes, sir. It helps. Really helps. Yeah. So use any method you want to use. If you want to go through a student, go through. If the student is comfortable to help, that is fine. If it's not comfortable, don't force the student. Don't see that the person is bad. No. Maybe they all have their experiences why they don't want to go that in that route. So let's just um, see them from that person. Like I see the, the Dr. Nadi you contacted. You see, he tried and he's telling you the truth. He's saying there's nothing I can do. Like just yes. contact me. There's nothing I can do to convince yeah. this person. Just make sure you send your document to the person, relate to the person, and that is it. That is the truth. He has told you that. Somebody else can say, don't worry, I'm going to speak on your behalf because I know who you are. I know that you are a good student like me. As Nathaniel is now, I can, I can take Nathaniel to anywhere. <laughs> and, and so and so many yeah. of you, I can take more. So I, like from my experience with you guys, I can take you, take your document, hand one-on-one -on -one to go and give somebody because like, I've worked with you. I know who you are. I know that you cannot fail in this type of thing. So that is, it depends on the relationship also so let's hear from miracle Maduboko. so i will Nathan, you can stop sharing let's just have a let's okay. open the let's yeah let's be on okay so yeah Maduboko, my miracle you can ask your question all right good day everyone um so I wanted to ask if it's okay to reach out to more than one professor in the same department. Uh, maybe if we can reach out to several of their, whether LinkedIn or email, whichever medium. Wow. Your question is very direct. Uh, it's very important because one of us here is, is having that, that very big issue. I think there's, there's nothing wrong. You can reach out to several professors in one department. The, the the reason is that professors, in as much as they are in the same department, most most times they are also very much independent. Professor A is working on his own. Professor B is working on 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 his own. And also, they can also be dependent. You can have two professors supervising one student. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong. Meet. All from, from the student's side, all you want is a yes. Whether two professors says yes, say yes to your one application, all you want is a yes. Whether one professor say, says yes to your application, all you want is a yes. So if two professors want to supervise you, that is fine. If one professor wants to supervise you, that is fine. So don't you can send to more than one you can send your application to more than one professor in a department. Oh, thank yeah. you. Sir. Welcome. I guess this miracle is one of my students, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, because I can remember that 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 name. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? on the linkedin thing or on the cbt i think we should be draw calling it a day here any mm -hmm. comments no comments no question i want to thank every one of us for showing up and for staying up till this moment
I think it's it's your time and you are investing your time in a very right course. It's a course for your future, it's a course for your career, and I don't think it's a wasted one. Thank you for joining. And after this section, we will share the link to this section on our platform. Like we said before, we'll try to post these things on YouTube so that it will have a wider, it will reach out to other people who will be seeking such information. And um, thank you to Nathaniel for your time. Thank you to our organizer, Kelechi Igwe. You have really shown um, commitment. And I wish every one of you well, those that commented, those that asked questions, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Have a good weekend. I will stop recording now. Thank you so much, sir. Really appreciate it.